Welcome into Payoff Pitch Action Network's MLB betting podcast. We are presented by BetMGM, the king of sports books. Friday, April 26th. Brendan Glasheen joined today by BJ Cunningham and Mike Ionello. Great to have you with us all today for Friday Best Bets. You can hear us Mondays, Tuesdays, and Fridays during the MLB regular season. So subscribe to the podcast if you have not done so already, wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also find us on the Action Network YouTube channel for the video version. I would add as well, if you're looking for more from people in our crew, Action Network Discord is a great way to chop it up with some of our contributors uh, to see what they're eyeing. In particular, Sean Kerner with K-Props, for example. Uh, it's a fun little community to get involved with uh, folks at Action. So, And you can meet friends and that's that's great, right? Camaraderie is great in, in this day and age. Uh, we teased end of last week that we'd be doing some giveaways because we hit 200 episodes of Payoff Pitch. Well, shout out to Mr. Guess Who 410. M R G U E S S W H O 410. Mr. Guess Who 410. Our first giveaway winner. Thank you for your five-star rating and review. Uh, all you have to do, email podcasts at actionnetwork.com. P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S -S at actionnetwork.com to claim your prize. Uh, we'll pick another winner next week and all through the month of May. So if you haven't done so already, five-star ratings and reviews. Uh, you get a chance at some swag or an Action Pro account, access to an Action Pro account. Uh, account so get on that if you need to all right let's dive into the slate 14 gamer on this friday april 26th i will turn to bj first what jumps out to you my friend is a best bet for today i like the dodgers minus 120 on the road in toronto gavin stone has been an interesting starting pitcher this season he's been a little bit unlucky his era is over six but his expected era is closer to four He's got a pretty dominant changeup, which is his main pitch. It's only allowing a 194 expected weighted on base average. And he's doing a really, really good job with that pitch and his and his sinker of keeping the ball off the opponent's barrel. 90th percentile in barrel rate allowed. And what's interesting about him, he has a massive split advantage here. He's really good against righties because he, he utilizes his sinker and throwing it inside to righties. He's only allowing a 229 weighted on base average to righties this season. He's getting absolutely obliterated by lefties, though. But if you look at the Blue Jays lineup, at best, they could put four left-handed bats in their lineup, and they're all near the bottom of the order because all their best hitters, Bichette, Guerrero, Springer, they're all at the top of the order, and they're all right-handed hitters. Chris Bassett is a negative regression, negative regression candidate early on here. Expected the array well over six. The problem with his, his stuff is very average, and he's a big-time sinker ball guy. He's throwing a sinker a little over 40% of the time. The Dodgers, since the beginning of last season, have a 413 expected weighted on base average against right-handed sinkers, which is 27 points higher than anybody else in Major League Baseball. So I think the Dodgers actually do have a pretty decent advantage here uh, on the mound in terms of matchups. They have a better offense. Bullpen matchup here is pretty even, so projected the Dodgers closer to minus 140, so I like them at minus 120. Excellent. All right, Mike, what's going on? Is this your first payoff pitch? It is my, my payoff pitch debut. No kidding. All right. I like the Bruins hat. I'm into that. Go Bees. Uh, what, do you, what do you got for us today? Well, how about this? Give a quick intro to the people and uh, your, your baseball uh, background. Yeah, I've been, writing, I've been writing baseball for the Action Network for uh, four years now, just I do the uh, the college football podcast with Mike Calabrese, the Group Five Deep Dive. So you guys, I'm sure, have heard me there. But yeah, first payoff pitch debut just never really worked out with my my work schedule. But little little hybrid work situation now. Where I'm working from home, so hopefully my boss isn't listening to this and realizes Great. I'm not actually doing my job right now. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because it's like I, we we didn't keep Mike off of here. Like we made that very clear. And yeah, you must right at night. And you must have been pretty busy last night watching the draft and whatnot. So I was. Yeah, I do have a real job. So I was I was kind of half um my laptop's here. So if my boss is watching. Hopefully my picks win and then she doesn't get mad at me. Uh but yeah, for my best bet, I'm going with Detroit. I'm going with the Tigers, minus one twelve against Kansas City. Uh speaking of the negative regression, Seth Lugo, 34 years old, and I am just not buying this 2.03 ERA. 
He has a 5.18 expected ERA. He's allowing a 3.58 expected weighted on base average. He ranks in the bottom 25% of the league in both. When you look at Lugo, he's managed to strike out just 14 batters in 31 innings. Just doesn't have swing and miss stuff whatsoever. He had one at one strikeout in his last outing. His ERA is good because he faced the White Sox twice and they couldn't hit a beach ball with a tennis racket. So you look at his last outing against the Orioles, gave up nine hits, four runs. And Detroit's offense has looked really good over the last 10 days. They've scored at least five runs in five of their seven games. So they're really starting to get going. All their best bats are left-handed. So I think they have a good matchup against Lugo. And the biggest issue has been that they strike out too much. That's kind of the Tigers' biggest weakness. Well, Lugo doesn't strike out anybody. So that's not exactly a matchup I'm worried about here. And then I really like Reese Olsen for the Tigers. He's a guy I feel like I'm just always kind of high on. And he has a 3.99 expected ERA. And he's done a really good job this year tweaking his pitch mix. Um, he's upped his changeup usage a lot this year. Dropped his slider usage. And that's really helped him. His changeup has a 56% whiff rate this season. It's been really effective. He's also raised his ground ball rate from 42% to 52%. I think that's kind of why his results haven't been maybe as good as they I would like them to be this year. Um, but he has a wicked high 343 average uh, against balls in play. So that's crazy high. That's going to come down a little bit. So I think he's just gotten a bit unlucky. So I'm going to back Olsen and the Tigers here against Kansas City. I don't think Lugo is going to keep this up much longer. All right. And that is the uh, afternoon game today. One o'clock yeah. start. Uh, yeah, so get that in sure, early. Yeah, I want to make sure you jump on that. Uh, at 111, first pitch, uh, Lugo, Olsen, your pitching matchup. Okay, uh, we've identified a game uh, for our Fade the Public segment. The people love the St. Louis Cardinals today over the Mets. 67% of the bets, 99% of the cash. Coming in on the Cardinals, uh, fading Butto, fading Butto on the mound today, uh, the pitcher for the New York Mets. BJ, any value on the Mets today, uh, or the people want the underdog in St. Louis? Yeah, I don't really have a play on either the underdog or the Mets here, but I do have a prop, and I like Butto under five and a half strikeouts. It's really interesting with him right now because through his first three starts. He is putting up just crazy whiff numbers. 32% whiff rate on his fastball, over 40% on both his changeup and his slider. But the shocking thing is that all of his pitches by Stuff Plus have actually been graded like well below the major league average. Changeup is at 65. His slider is at 102. Fastball at 87. But he has a 31.8% strikeout rate. He's not going to maintain that with this type of stuff. If you look on fan graphs, his composite strikeout percentage projected for the rest of the season is 20.5%. He, on average, he faces about 22 batters per start. Take those uh, multiplied together, you actually get a projection closer to 4.5. The Cardinals, in terms of strikeout rate against right-handed hitters, they're around major league average. And if you look through their individually, how they've done since the beginning of 2023, there's only about three guys in their lineup that are higher than the MLB average in terms of strikeout rate against righties. So our action last projections have that 4.2. So I think this is a, a wonderful sell high spot on Butto, who is, I, I don't think he's going to keep up these type of whiff rates uh, with this average to below average of stuff. So under five and a half strikeouts at minus 110. For Butto, for me. Okay. How about you, Mike? Uh, Cardinals plus 110 on the money line today. The people like them. Yeah, I'm not so much fading the public as I am fading Miles Michaelis. Uh, he's one of my favorite pitchers to fade. So I'm going to take the Mets here. I already bet him. Uh, he's just not a good pitcher. He's one of my favorite to, to go against. He has a 6.49 ERA this season. Opponents have a 325 expected batting average against him. He doesn't strike out many guys. He allows a ton of hard contact. And, you know, I'm not super high on the Mets per se, but Lindor's been crushing the ball lately. He really took off. They kind of did the uh, the Trey Turner thing when they gave him the standing ovation, and he's got like five home runs since then. So I think we're starting to see a little bit of the uh, power of positivity, so maybe more teams will start adapting that. Um, but then the Cardinals offense is just broken, and I feel like for the last two years, we've kind of been paying a tax on the Cardinals. I feel like everyone just keeps saying like, oh, well, it's the Cardinals. Oh, well, it's the Cardinals. Like people just keep expecting them to turn around. They were bad last year. They're bad this year. They're 27th in WRC+. They're 27th in weighted on base average. This is just not a good team. 
Aaron Otto's been okay, but he's got just one home run this year. You know, he's getting old. Goldschmidt's batting 200. Brendan Donovan's batting 217. Nolan Gorman's batting 198. The only player on the Cardinals with an OPS over 800 is Wilson Contreras. So you have an offense that can't hit the ball. You have a bad pitcher. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the Mets here. I, I'm not, I don't really have much of an opinion on Budo, but to me, it's just fade Michaelis, fade the Cardinals offense. I think we're getting a, a short price here on the Mets. Okay, very good. That's our fade the public segment for today. Yeah, three starts for uh, Jose Budo. Uh, Budo, his pronunciation is Budo. I apologize. I was like, wait, is it Budo, right? Budo, Budo just, I mean, it kind of. I'm 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 10 years old. I laughed when I said Budo. Uh but <laughs> Budo, according to Pro Baseball Reference, is the pronunciation. I had never heard of this guy. Uh so BJ's down on him based on it's gotta come back down to earth, and Mike's not there either with him. Hope he picks up today. BJ, it, it sounds like it looks like you have a thought. No, I, I was just the the Budo Budo thing was kind of making me laugh internally as well. That's all I wanted. That's how I was going to say. Oh, all right, good. All right, you admitted it too. But I but I internalized it. I didn't I didn't do it out loud. See what's so. good? Yeah, if he, if I he, did. If he pitches bad, you can call him Budo. That's right. Like, that's that's the nice unfortunate thing. thing. There's a reliever. I think he plays for the Braves now. And uh, Aaron Bummer. He used to play for yeah. the White Sox. Every well, single time he give up a home run, they just show his last name, and it would just be sad. Like with the uh, the old pit kicker, Chris Blewett. Yeah. Just yep. the worst name to miss a field goal. Yeah. Okay. Let's find uh, underdogs for today. Uh, BJ, what underdog to you has value on the slate? I like the Nationals, uh, plus 150 against the Marlins. I'm not going to sit here and say that Trevor Williams is a good pitcher because he's not. But he's been doing okay this season. And he's got a 309 expected ERA. And the reason for that is is because he's now inducing a high number of ground balls. Ground ball rate is getting closer to 50%. When he's around there, he's successful. If you go back to his years with the Pirates, when he actually was halfway decent, like he was getting a high ground ball rate on all of his off-speed pitches. He's got no velocity left. His fastball is averaging 89 miles per hour. Um, but the Marlins have a 52% ground ball rate against right-handed pitching. For context, that's the worst in Major League Baseball. And the Dodgers have a 35% ground ball rate. So generally good offenses get the ball in the air and don't put it on the ground. So even though even though Williams isn't really that good of a pitcher, if he's able to induce a lot of ground balls, like he can get through this Marlins lineup. There's only three hitters in the Marlins lineup that have a, a way to runs credit plus above 100 to begin the season. And Hayes Luzardo, even though he's you know a very good pitcher and he grades out pretty well by stuff plus, he hasn't been good this season with his command. His control is all over the place. His walk per nine rates above four. Location plus is bottom 15 among qualified starting pitchers. And now he's got a home run problem. And the reason for that home run problem is because he likes to utilize his fastball up and into right-handed pitchers. 45% of the time, his fastball is up in the zone. His velocity has gone down a mile per hour on his fastball on average. So if you're throwing it slower up and into righties, they're going to hit you. So far this season, he's long a 383 expected weighted on base average on that pitch. So, I mean, in talent wise, of course, Luzardo is a better pitcher. But given the matchup here, the pitcher that Williams is inducing those ground balls, I think he can get through this Marlins lineup uh, pretty easily, quite frankly. And, you know, the Nationals, since the start of last season, they haven't been the worst team in baseball against lefties. They've been okay, they've been around league average. So, uh, I like the Nationals here at plus 150. Uh, I think the Marlins are a little overvalued. Mike, for your underdog, you're going against BJ because I saw BJ put Philadelphia, uh, the <laughs> Phillies, in the app last night on the money line. Good pitching matchup on paper um, with Musgrove going against Aaron Nola. Why do you like the Musgrove Padres side? Yeah, a few years ago, you'd look at this and think, you know, two elite starters, and that just has not been the case this year. Uh, first of all, this was a really hard underdog slate. I feel like every underdog was either like minus 102, plus 102, or like the White Sox. So I definitely had trouble pick, uh, picking it. So this isn't, you know, my most confident underdog I've ever bet. Um, Joe Musgrove's been horrible this year. He's He's got a 5.75 ERA, 6.73 expected ERA. But, you know, his entire career, he's been a sub-4 ERA type of pitcher. I don't just think he sucks all of a sudden. Clearly something's going on with him. His strikeout rate is down. His walk rate is up. I do expect both of those to kind of return to his normal numbers eventually. 
You saw last last outing, Musgrove went seven innings. He looked much better. He, he gave up a pair of home runs, but that was kind of it. He just made two bad pitches. And then Aaron Nola also got off to kind of a shaky start, but he's been able to smooth things out, especially over his last two starts. But when you look at who Nola's gotten to face this year, he faced the Nationals, the Cardinals, the Rockies, and the White Sox in his last four starts. So he's facing four bottom, you know, five, bottom 10 offenses. So I'm not sure I'm fully convinced Nola's back. His velocity is way down. His strikeout rate is down. So these are kind of just two pitchers I don't fully trust right now. And I think they're probably pretty even. Um, I don't really think Musgrove's as bad as he's looked. And then I'm not convinced Nola's just all of a sudden, you know, back to his ace ways because he faced the four worst teams in baseball. Um, also throughout his career, Nola has always been much worse on the road. He has a three, two, two career ERA at home, a four, two, one ERA on the road. His K through nine rate is a full strikeout lower when he's on the road. So I like the fact that this game is in San Diego and the Padres have smacked right-handed pitching this season. They've scored the most runs in the league off righties. They sit fifth and weighted on base average against right-handed pitchers. And honestly, the key to this whole handicap, Manny Machado is expected back in the lineup after having his first child. So we have to bake dad strength into this line as well. I don't think the books have adjusted for that. Um, so yeah, not the best underdog slate, but I'll take the Padres as a short dog here. I think these pitchers are kind of a wash and I'll take the home team for that. That's been hitting right hander pitches really well. Phillies are four and one and Nola's starts this year, uh, four in a row, one loss being the Braves, his first start of the season and Musgrove, uh, when he's on the mound, Padres are four and two BJ, were you BJ, were you here last Friday? I was not. Okay. Who was here last Friday? I think it was DeBundo and Tanner. This game, you guys tell me, because I'm looking at the action uh, action uh, pro uh, section in the app, and the money's on the under. This this feels very similar to what we saw last Friday with Snell against Montgomery. Two pitchers with name recognition, totals with, was at seven and a half. Any interest in the over, in, in, in a contrarian over based on uh, at seven and a half? I would generally say no. I think I projected this the seven point six. the The thing is, is obviously San Diego is a very pitcher friendly park, sure. um, so that kind of plays against it as well. And you know, the reality is, is like Mike said, you know, Musgrove. I agree. I don't think he's going to be as continue to be this bad as he's been. Same thing with Nola. I know he's pitched against some uh, easier competition here, but at least Nola uh, has a pitch and is able to utilize it pretty well with his knuckle curve even though the velocity is down on everything else. So um, generally I, I would probably say no. And, you know, of course the, either of these guys could very easily blow up and this could go over very easily. But also the other end of the spectrum is, is that these are two really good pitchers and they could shut down these lineups. So um, yeah, from a projection standpoint, I don't have much value on it. I don't think Sean projects much value on it either. So um, it'd be a pass for me. Okay. Fair enough. It seems like a game that either, the pitchers pitch like their namesake and it goes under or it goes like way over. Mm -hmm. Right. So, Zerillo... so play some alts. Yeah. It might be like four, three after three innings. <laughs> Zerillo does not have a pick on this game. Looking at the, uh, looking at the app right now for Padres and Phillies. All right. We can wrap it up with some final bets. BJ just gave his analysis on the Phillies. Um, mm -hmm. So that's all you got for the rest of the day. Mike, yep. anything else you want to add? Yeah, I like, uh, I'm going with the double New York here team. I like the Yankees as short favorites against Milwaukee. Um, I think the regression train is going to hit Colin Ray super hard. He has a 6.13 expected ERA, which tells a vastly different story than his current 2.08 ERA. He's allowed 22 hits this year and yielded just five earned runs off of those hits. He's managed just 14 strikeouts. I think eventually those hits are going to start turning into runs and 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 probably do so quickly. He doesn't miss, miss bats at all, which is a problem because opponents have a almost 40% hard hit rate against him and a 91.3 average exit velocity, which is wildly high. And then uh, Luis Heal for the Yankees, he has elite stuff. He has reworked his... He, he missed like the last two years with a, a really poorly timed Tommy John surgery. He's reworked his pitch mix since coming back. He's increased his changeup usage a lot, and it's really working. He hasn't allowed a single. He has, I think he's allowed one hit off of it all year. It, his changeup's been awesome. 
if you look at his baseball savant profile, it is it is that of an elite pitcher. Everything is red. He ranks in the top 10% of the league in expected ERA, expected batting average, strikeout rate, barrel rate, hard hit rate. He just gives up 700 walks a game. So the only one that can beat heel is heel. So if he just finds a way to limit walks, then I love his profile. And I think the Yankees, their offense has gone a little bit cold over the last week or so. And I think Colin Ray is, is exactly what they need uh, for their regression. And then the one other one I have, it's not really a play right now because I think it's kind of settled around eight. Um, if an eight and a half pops in the Red Sox Cubs game, um, I like the under there. I know you guys are both Sox fans. Uh, I'm obsessed with Cutter Crawford. I think he is nasty and he is there's he is he's gonna start getting priced as the Red Sox ace soon. So I'm trying to jump on him as much as possible. Uh he has a 0.66 ERA, which obviously is not sustainable, but his 2.61 expected ERA is still nasty. In five starts, he's allowed just two runs while striking out 23 batters. And then on the flip side, the Red Sox offense stinks. So it's kind of a perfect under game. Tyler O'Neill is not going to keep hitting home runs every night. Uh, so I kind of like that. And then, um, you know, showed up for the Cubs. He's been just as good. He's allowed two runs in four starts, 21 strikeouts. So I think he can strike out enough Red Sox batters. He's, he's given up hard contact, but I think he strikes out enough of the Sox to keep this number under. And like I said, I love Carter Crawford. So I'm just going to try to keep back into him any way I can. So if I can get an under eight and a half with some juice in the Cubs Red Sox game, I'll probably pull the trigger on that. Okay. They've got some, uh, some seven and a halfs are out there too. Um, Shota strikeout prop is at five and a half. Cutter Crawford's at five and a half as well. Shota at Fenway. Exciting. Cubs Red Sox. Looking forward to it. BJ, looking forward to that series this weekend. Should bring back some nostalgia. I am for sure. Yeah, you know, obviously I live in the Midwest, so there's a lot of Cub fans here. Good, a good day for for Shota to pitch because, as we know, he's a very fly ball dependent pitcher, uh, and so being in a a stadium like Fenway Park, if the wind was blowing out, he could have been in trouble. But it looks like we don't got much wind. A little, a little you know, six to seven mile an hour crosswind uh, going from first base to third base. So it should be a good matchup. Yeah, Cutter Crawford's been amazing. His cutter has been incredible. Shota's given up a lot of hard contact, but the Red Sox have the fifth highest strikeout rate in the league. So I'm hoping yeah. you just mow them down and keep this game under. And it won't be, you know, this isn't Fenway in July either, right? So the ball's not no, flying. It's 40, 47 degrees. So okay. not like it's, you know, the warmest day in Boston. It's, it's so, because I live, you know, I live in Boston and I look out the window and I'm like, wow, it looks like it's like 80 out, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. not, we're not there yet. April yeah. can be so annoying. Um, yeah, I hear you, bud. We're getting there. I mean, yeah, you're in the Midwest, so mm -hmm. I get it. All right, good stuff, Mike. Thanks for jumping on, and welcome to uh, welcome to Payoff Pitch. Hopefully, we thank get you on here again soon. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Hopefully, I'll uh, make a good first impression here. All right, you can find Mike Ionello and BJ Cunningham in the free award-winning Action Network app. Should they add anything else to their card, keep an eye on those guys this weekend as well. Our other baseball contributors. Once again, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, leave a five-star rating or review to chance to win at action some action swag uh, or a free Action Pro subscription. And as I mentioned, Action Network Discord, there is a link uh, to the Discord in the episode description if you'd like to get involved there. For BJ Cunningham, Mike Ionello, Brendan Glasheen, thanks for tuning in to our Friday Best Bets pod in Major League Baseball, April 26th slate. This is Payoff Pitch, Action Network's MLB betting podcast. We are presented by BetMGM. You all have a fantastic weekend. We will talk to you again on Monday. See ya.